Fox Polling Group came out with a brand new poll, and this is what they found. Overall, nationally, they've got Kamala Harris now at 48, and we got Trump at 50, so that's a flip now from where it was previously. In the seven battleground states, however, we've got Trump at 46 and Harris with a six-point lead at 52. So is this the way it's going to go? Is Trump driving up his numbers where he was getting votes in prior elections? and not necessarily getting the votes in the states that he needs? Maybe, that's one look. Here's another look over here. Talking about these seven battleground states, what we wanna do today is kinda of take the logic, because everything's so close, right? We wanna take the logic and flip it on its head, turn it 180 degrees around, all right? Upper Midwest, these states here, right? The Blue Wall, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. That's where Kamala Harris wants to turn the trick to get to 270. What if that Senate race in Wisconsin is as close as it suggests over the past two weeks? Maybe Trump's doing better in Wisconsin. What would happen now on this number from 219 compared to her 225? That would take him to 229. Maybe that Senate race in Michigan is indeed tighter than we have been led to believe. Maybe the Arab American vote, maybe the union vote does have an effect on Trump's number in Michigan. For the sake of this exercise today, we'll give him Michigan. He won there in 2016 after all. And maybe in Pennsylvania, Perhaps they could go for Blue Collar Scranton Joe, but they can't go for Kamala from California. Maybe Pennsylvania goes for Trump. And look where that goes, 263. Now let's use some other logic here and twist it around in the Southeast. Maybe the demo shift in Georgia since COVID is more significant than even the pollsters understand. All those 26 metro counties around Atlanta, maybe they're bluer now than they were in 2020. What would happen then if Kamala Harris wins in Georgia and uses the same argument in North Carolina, places like Greensboro and Raleigh, maybe even Charlotte, maybe they're bluer than we think. If that's the case and she flips North Carolina, Kamala Harris would be at 257. And on election night under this scenario, we would shift our entire attention to the Southwest. Arizona did end Donald Trump in 2020. But this year, what if he wins Arizona? That would be enough to give him the presidency in 2024. But I'll take that off here for the purpose of this exercise and give Arizona to Kamala Harris. That would not be enough. <laughs> Nevada would. Let's come back to the Midwest a little bit. Nebraska, too. We believe in Omaha, that will be blue. That would put her exactly at 269 electoral votes, which would leave the silver state of Nevada enough to put this at 269, 269. It is not out of the possibility that this could happen on election night. Let's go on back over here and we'll talk a little more so about when it. You, so when you lie your head down at yes. night, Yes. Are you doing that in your sleep? Um, <clears throat> I, I want to say no. But this, and if that, I mean, it's really interesting to play with the map like that and to see where we could, what could we yeah. could be doing election. So, so we're looking for these nuances, right? Like early voting in Georgia. Are they giving us some clues right now? We're 48 hours into it, and there are some clues out there, but it's inconclusive. But we've talked about these Senate races in the upper Midwest, and they've surprised us in a big way. Mike Rogers seems to be gaining. Hovde seems to be gaining in Wisconsin. If that's the, if their boat is rising, then Trump's boat must be rising as well. I want to send, show to you think one about. other poll from last night. This is Fox News poll on percent saying yes. Okay, on terms of honest and trustworthy, Kamala Harris 48, Donald Trump 43. Strong leader, Harris 47, Trump 55. Up to the job of president, 50 for Kamala Harris and 53 for Trump. And mental soundness, 54, 52. I'm going to call that a tie. Mm -hmm. So... We've okay. got new numbers that. and lots of fun. Okay, so we're going to get back to that momentarily. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.